welcome back to developers home and today we are going to discussing about spark etl and in a spark etl we'll discuss about cloud data lakes as our source so you know that in a cloud data lakes we normally use azure aws or google cloud and in azure we normally use azure blob storage or azure data lake services in aws we have s3 bucket and same way in google also we have those buckets so you know that in earlier um, blocks we have done etl and we have deal with different data sources so we have started with files different type of files like json orc parquet csv text then we have did etl with uh, sql databases after that in a last blog we have done that with mongodb and today we are doing with azure data lake services so you know that uh, you can like read it from any of the data source and you can write it to any of the data source using your spark session so now uh, like uh, we have this uh, public open uh, azure blob storage and azure data lakes are available which ca we can directly use so microsoft has provided there are few azure blob storages azure open data sets so you can go here and if you want to taste with any of the data set you can go and use that today we'll be uh, using three different data types like uh, we'll be using uh, nyc uh, taxi data we'll be using covid public data and we'll be also using holiday data so first thing is what you can do is you can clone this uh, github repo and where you have all the solutions and you know that uh, what we are like uh, doing what all operations we're gonna do everything is available here so as we discussed we were dealing with nyc yellow taxi data covid public data and uh, public holiday data so thing is like nyc taxi which is like very big data set which is having like uh, 50 billions of row and which is having like 50 gb of data so which is very big data set covid public data which is also medium data set and public holiday which is small data set so i will do this demonstration with uh, public holiday blob because if i go with nyc yellow taxi it's like uh, 50 gb of data which will take time to get it from blog and do all the operations so i'm not gonna demonstrate that but if in case you want to deal with huge amount of data you want to learn how to deal with huge amount of data you can still use nyc taxi data so you know that uh, in with our spark instance we already have those libraries are installed so if in case if you want to check that what you can do is you can go to opt spark jar folder and you can see that we already have azure blob storage azure data lake storage those libraries are already available with us but if in case you don't have those packages installed in your spark instance as we discussed in earlier video and blog on how to download external packages from maven you can follow that and you can have those azure storage or azure data lake into your spark instance so now we'll go with uh, uh, practice and i'm going to jupyter lab and what you can do is you can clone this uh, github repo you can upload those notebooks here on this uh, jupyter notebook so now you know as we discussed like we have three different data sets but i am going with uh, public holiday because other two data sets are very big data sets so only thing you know that when you want to connect to azure blob storage or azure data lake services you will need blob account name blob container name and then in that container we can create different types of folders so you need that relative path and then that's all and we also need to give tokens so that it can securely connect to your blob storage or that particular path so currently we are using public and open data lakes so we don't need to pass that token but i am just passing this account name container name and relative path this is applies same for if in case you are using azure data lake services only thing is when you are creating this blob path as of now we are using wasb which is for blob storage if you are using azure data lake services you need to use avfs which is for azure data lake services and at the end we see s which is for https if you have that in http format so you can use without s but if you have that which https you need to pass s here 
so if you see only thing is we have different blob storage and container name and relative path so that's the only difference with public holiday or yellow cap or covid data rest of all things are same so if you want to practice with others you can also try by your own we already have this notebooks available on this uh, github page so now what i will do is i will quickly uh, start my spark session which is currently running i will provide this all the uh, variables i will create this block path so i have this block path and then what i will do is i will just uh, define this uh, data frame and in that i will pass that i want to connect this blob storage so it will take some time and once that is done meanwhile what we can do is we can go to this uh, uh, ui a uh, spark ui and from there we can see that uh, how it is executing and the thing is you know that i have already executed this earlier so i know that this takes around like 48 seconds to read those data so this time i think it took less time uh, but next thing is you know that we can do print schema and after that we can also print data from there so we'll get to know that what kind of data we have available in this blob storage but yes we have successfully connected to this uh, blob storage and once that is connected what we can do is like uh, we can create a temp table or we can create high view so that we can do sql transformation and after that if you want to store this data into parquet format if you want to store this data into json format csv format or if you want to store this data as a destination to mysql postgres sql we can do this we have learned on earlier blogs how to do this only thing is you need to just specify that packages if you don't have those packages already installed so now this will take a uh, time meanwhile what we can do is we can go to this uh, spark ui and from there we'll learn that uh, how this is working so currently we see this this is currently running but if you see on this spark ui so on the right hand side you will see name of that spark application so you see that we have here pass chapter 3 as our spark application name and then what all jobs are running you can check on this page and here you also see this timeline it means you know that when you start your job and when that job is ended so you can see that here and in our case currently we were executing this one so this is showing here let me just do refresh because it seems like this is also completed so this job is also completed but if in case you wanna go into details so you can click on this which will go to this uh, stages page now if i click on this it will go to stages page and from there if you want to check a uh, dynamic or cyclic graph or additional metrics you can do this you can also check uh, timelines here like what actually time it took or if you go here and check so it show that it's actually what it's doing it's scanning parquet files so on a blob storage we have this parquet files are available so it's scanning that and then it will do filter because we said that we just need uh, two rows and then it will display so if i go here it should have you know that printed those two rows so we are currently printing this uh, public holidays so it will print that uh, country and then it will say holiday name date and everything so this is how we read data from blob storage now next thing is you know as we discussed we can create create temp table we can do all the transformation so this is just printing all the uh, data frames now i am creating one more data frame and in which i am saying that have this all data into this data frame and i am saying that i need top 10 rows from that blob storage and i say that just write that into uh, my parquet file so it will go and write into our parquet file and i'm saying as a folder as a parquet holiday data so it will store data into this i have already executed and that's why i have this file available here i have also executed this for you know that uh, storing this data into csv format which will take some time but at the end once this is executed you will see this data available into csv format also and uh, after that uh, so this is executed successfully so now we should have one more file available here or it's just overwriting adding more data sometime it takes time to display this file here 
but now you know that once you create also csv you can also do like all other operations like i'm just displaying this data and i also done count so i can get to know like how many rows are available into that blob storage so it's showing that it's having like 69,000 uh, rows available there so yeah like this is how you know that you can connect to azure blob storage or azure uh, data lake services if you have any questions uh, please uh, let me know please comment here and uh, we'll see you in a next video where we connecting to azure instead of azure we'll connect into aws s3 bucket so till then see you and thank you